Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial by Corinthians Corey. What we're going to be covering this time is how to convert a figure, a conforming figure for one of your own characters into uh, dynamic clothing so that you can use it in a cloth room. Uh, what I've already done is loaded up Victoria 4 and on my 10th frame I've already got her posed in her final frame with some morphs applied and what I want to show you from a simulation that I've already run is that sometimes there are items on the conforming clothing after it's been converted to dynamic clothing some items will actually fall off or fall apart or rip apart or whatever the case may be um, so I want to show you that issue before we get into how to convert the conforming clothing to dynamic clothing so you know what it is that you'll be confronting in this tutorial so um, what I did here was I loaded up uh, I believe this is, let me go to my figures library, uh, yeah this is pretty base 4 uh, this is her brassiere and her panties, I loaded those up and I've already converted those into dynamic clothing and run a simulation so uh, scrubbing through the simulation here everything looks fine looks fine, you start to see some problems on the bra now this is actually reacting the way a bra would react the panties are fine uh, but pay attention to this. Aha, as we spin around we see that there's some problems. The straps have actually come undone. Now, the thing is, they've actually come undone at the correct place where something would come undone if it's not uh, put together through uh, good mesh stitching. Now, this is not the merchant's fault. They did not intend for this to happen because they don't intend for their product to have been used as dynamic clothing. So it's not an issue for them. It's no fault of theirs. It's great clothing. Uh, this is my first time loading it up, so I mean, it conformed and moved earlier when I checked it out. But we're not using conforming. To be honest, I'm like a lot of merchants. I buy things so I can support the characters, but I don't actually render much in the way of pretty things, <laughs> even though that's what the character's name is. Um, let me spin this around to where the light is. Actually, you know what? I'll just spin the light around instead. Hang on one second. Zoop. Okay. Uh, what we're dealing with is this little clasp here. Uh, the clasp in the back. There's a clasp here and a clasp here. And that is where the outfit actually separates when the, the simulation runs. What the problem is, is these things aren't hooked together so we're gonna have to do something with these and hook them together any outfit that you have that used to be conforming where the seams won't stitch stitch together as in they were never stitched together and never meant to be stitched together uh, there might be a problem the grouping and how the character was originally grouped when you're dealing with dynamic clothing none of that matters with dynamic clothing you don't have any groups you have dynamic groups but you don't have any conforming groups your dynamic groups have nothing to do whatsoever to the groupings that are underneath on the figure. You think they do, and in a way they do, but your dynamic groups can be maybe one or two vertices, um, whereas conforming groups can be hundreds and hundreds of polygons that have to match up with the underlying figure's grouping as well. Anyway, if you don't understand that, don't worry, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to get this done anyway. So no panic mode for anyone. I'm going to go back into the cloth room. I'll show that to you one more time. It fits and then it breaks apart. Fits fine and then it breaks apart. So with that said, what I'm going to do is just load up the uh, original item just so you see how to get the item out and then back in again. So the conforming item was the uh, bikini, top and the bottom. What I'd like to do is actually just delete it, but you know what, I don't want to run that simulation all over again, so what I'm going to do is just hide it for now and I'll bring in the figure, so no one get confused here, letting you know ahead of time. Uh, so here's the brassiere, I'm going to double click, load that in panties, double click, load those in. As you can see they actually have a uh, texture on them at the moment. 
which won't come back. That's fine. You can always reapply that stuff later. Um, go to Wavefront, sorry, export your object, your first frame. Make sure you're on your first frame, otherwise this won't work. You can deselect everything. Your clothing does not have to be attached to Victoria 4, as in conform to her. Go ahead and click OK. You can save it as whatever you want. Bikini. I'm saving the brassiere and the panties as one single object, not as separate. It's up to you if you'd like to do two, then you'll have to run two separate objects if you'd like to export each one separately. But for examples of a tutorial, I'm just going to do one. Uh, weld body part seams. Yes. If you want to use these other options, these are all optional. You don't have to. They're not going to help you anything. Sometimes they will. Sometimes. But as you go along, you'll learn when they're important and when they're not. For what we're doing, it's not important. Um, all right, so get rid of that. So what I did was I just exported this. So what I can do now is just delete it and delete the raw, delete, and I'm gonna bring back in the one that I had earlier. But for those of you that are following along, what you would do is go import wave front object bikini, that's the one that you uh, just saved, save it wherever, um, you can turn all these options off and just click OK and it'll pop right back into the scene where you're about to see mine pop back in. Just, you know, sometimes your textures won't be applied and usually, almost always, your uh, your shader system is gone so you'll have to reapply that stuff. So it's a good idea to save that or, you know, know where that stuff is stored. That way you can reapply it when you're ready to render. Okay, so the outfit is now brought back in. It's one single uh, prop object. As you can see, I can just grab it and move the whole thing all over the place. It's one object now, not two separate ones. Now, remember the issue that we had um, on the end frame. We had the issue where the uh, back part was coming apart, like here. Okay, that's a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our tenth frame here or sorry, first frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell Poser that we want this clasp to stay exactly where it is, the other clasp to stay exactly where it is, and for these straps to stay connected to the clasp. Okay? Now, that's as a lot of things easier said than done, but we'll get it done in a few seconds here. Clothify the bikini, which is what I called it, you know, call it whatever. And you can tell it to collide against anything. It always jumps to uh, frame number two when you're writing over another simulation, but whatever. Um, I think I already had everything set up for what it was going to collide against. Use your own judgment on that for whatever you're converting. Uh, again, I'm going to go to Constrained Group. And this is Constrained Groups means anything that does follow the underlying groups of the object. Now, this is a um, not a bikini, but a bra. So, I'm going to tell it to tell this little strap to stay in spot. Now, I can either do that by clicking on my wireframe mode and selecting it here, but then I'd actually get stuff in the background as well, so I'd get the front of the bra. So, I'd actually have to go in and use this little minus guy and deselect that in the front, you know, spin around and do it that way. But uh, another way might be if your item's already set up, and since it's a conforming item, maybe someone else made it so it might already have material groups so you can sometimes find that stuff in here now I can't honestly tell you if they the merchants set this stuff up you've got to look for yourself uh, base one base two line two and plastic two. I have no idea what that is but uh... because <laughs> like I said it's my first time really working with this so I'm gonna try base one I don't really know what that is let's zoom out oh, okay base one was the entire section for the panties. I'm going to go ahead and click remove all. Let's try base 2. Aha! Base 2 is the whole thing for the bra. Now we actually might want that. You know, we might want it to do that, but I don't. I actually want the bra to move along. So, let's try line 2. Oh, line 2 is this. Okay, that's fine. We did want the strap, so that's fine. Uh, plastic 2 since I didn't see anything move, I bet you that was um, the clasp. Whoa. Lo and behold, it is the clasp. Ta-da! 
So just like that, we've actually got what we need, but we got more than what we need. So use your minus, uh, go for your wireframe mode or some view like it, and deselect what you don't need. If your computer gives you trouble and it won't deselect stuff, then you might need to rotate around or deselect um, different things. Just rotate until you get everything except for what you need. Click on Edit Constraint Group, check it again, make sure it's just this stuff. So this stuff, when the simulation runs, it'll stay put. You also might want to constrain part of the panties too. Um, sometimes it's a good idea on uh, the panties to make the uh, crotch area stick so it doesn't fall to the floor when the simulation starts because the first thing it'll do is be attracted by gravity and it'll start to fall towards the floor. That's fine sometimes, but if you're doing a really thin girl like uh, Pretty Base 4 or something like that, that's a problem because then it'll just look like she has a weird saggy crotch and that's not attractive and in underwear don't do that. Underwear have elastic uh, so they usually stay put. In that case you would also go to the constrained group and you would select this under area and tell it to stay put. Uh, what I'm going to do is just do a quick side view. I want the underwear to stay up so I'm still in wireframe mode and what I'm going to do is just tell it that I want this part to stay put. The uh, panties there, I want them to stay up because the first thing I'll start to do is to fall down. And then I'm going to tell it that I want the uh, undercarriage of the panties to stay put as well. So what I'm going to do is choose constraint. This can cause a problem, by the way, uh, where weird, you know, the mesh starts to distort in ways you didn't want. So use the, your own judgment again. You might not even need to do this. It's completely up to you. And I'm selecting way too much in the first place. I only need a little bit of it to stay put. Uh, maybe this tiny little bit right there. Alright, so I guess I'm okay with that. And again, this is that's a personal choice. I'm doing that because I feel like doing it. You don't have to. Um, once you're done, you can go back into a different view. Uh, your wireframe mode is your best mode to do your calculations in. It'll run really fast. So you remember how it looked in the beginning, and now let's run it through again and see how it looks. So I'm going to pause this, I'll run through it, and you don't have to worry about it. Some tips for running through your simulation faster, go to uh, your line mode. Also turn your camera off, not off so to speak, just turn it so that it isn't set to animate. Turn the animation off, and if it's possible turn the visibility off as well. Okay, then... Hang on, I'll run the simulation and be right back. Okay, and then when the simulation is finally finished, we end up with a good outfit. As you can see, the bra now acts like a bra. No, I don't wear a bra. I have no idea. Uh, I'm assuming the breast doesn't pop out of the bottom like that. Maybe they do. What do I know? Anyway, the important part is the back part stayed together. Yay. See? No more parts snapping apart, and that's what we wanted. So that's it. The tutorial is now over. So if you have any questions, comments, you know, leave those. This will work for pretty much all your conforming clothing. However, sometimes something like a bra is split up into three or four different parts, and then in that case, you have to make the entire thing conform. It's up to you. Decide if you'll want to do that or not. It won't look pretty though. See how the straps are nice and straight? If you ended up making the whole thing conforming, it'd be zigzags all over the place like there was when we made it uh, constrained here, where it acts more like conforming clothing. Go figure, right? The, also, the other good thing about this is, hey, you didn't have to put any morphs in. In my calculation for this, it took like maybe, I don't know, a minute. So, easy peasy.